Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North Kesteven series. This is a large Lincolnshire district centred around the town of Sleaford. There's 75 parishes here, so let's take a look at one of them. Welcome back to North Kesteven, everybody, where the rain has slowed down a little bit since I left Brown Bruton last week's episode so hopefully this one won't be quite as wet as that one was. I'm standing on Moorland Close which gives us a clue to the name of this place. This is Carlton Le Moorland. The North Kesteven series is sponsored by Gaines Recycles 01427 617 752. For all your cycling needs, this is your one-stop shop located at 20 Ropery Road, Gainsborough, or online at gainsrecycles.com. There's a link in the description. Gaines Recycles, ask for Trevor Halstead. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. This week, North Kesteven brings us to another Carlton. Well, it is a popular British place name after all. This one is Carlton Le Morland, and as we already know, Le means in the. So this is pretty simply Carlton in the Morland. Not a difficult one to understand. Morland is right though, because at the time of Doomsday, this place had quite a bit of surrounding land. Some 250 acres were recorded as being meadow, and not much has changed today, if I'm honest. That's if you can overlook the modern housing developments, but they've been pretty modest. Carlton still looks and feels like a typical North Kesteven village. True, it may not have as many things available to it as some of its near neighbours, but it's certainly peaceful. It has some unusual bits of history. Carlton once had a leper colony, St Lazarus Hospital, which was founded before 1180 and maintained by the Order of St Lazarus. The Knights Templar and a monastic order owned lands in and around the parish in the Middle Ages, and the Disney family, who you'll remember from the Osgoodby episode, used to live in a manor house here before moving to Somerton Castle. Dotted all around the place are various old buildings, which give us a glimpse back into the past, including the old school, the various former chapels, and the White Hart pub all complemented by the modern Village Hall. That's Carlton. Let's go, folks. We begin our trip around Carlton Le Morland on Bridal Lane, a narrow footpathless road typical of many around here. First up is a pumping station. Both these and substations seem to be getting a bit of a following. Maybe I should film more of them. Bridal Lane doesn't have much more to write home about, save for the end of it, when the village hall appears on the left. Carlton Le Morland Village Hall was built in 2019 when the Parish Council was awarded a grant of half a million pounds from the National Lottery. It has a main hall and a meeting room plus an outside space at the rear with garden furniture and gazebos available. This big wall next to it belongs to the old vicarage. It's a 19th century brick building which is now a house. Speaking of houses, here's a nice row. A lot of Carlton's older ones are built of red brick. There's very few made of anything else. 
on the other side of the road is the phone box. There's no phone in here now, but there is a defib machine. All mod cons, eh? Well, it's a very quiet village, Carlton and Moreland, so far. I haven't met a soul on this first part of the walk. Having said that, someone's just come out of his house behind the camera. It's the first person I've seen. I'm certainly not going to get any response out of the residents of this place, though, because we're about to head into the churchyard at uh, Carlton and Moreland's church. Public transport wise, it's the same here in Carlton as it was in Brant Bruton. The number 47 is the bus you need. Next to the bus stop is a cast iron standpost for the village water supply. It was made in Kilmarnock, just like the one in Wellingore. It's sited right next to the lick gate of St Mary's Church. This is Grade 2 listed and it was installed in 1918 as a war memorial. St Mary's Church is Grade 1 listed. It dates from the 11th century originally, but its nave and tower were rebuilt in the 16th. It was restored between 1890 and 91 by Charles Hodgson Fowler. This is a church which has ties to the world-famous Disney family. Although its main branch was at Norton Disney, the family acquired local estates that had been 16th century monastic holdings. As a result, there are Disney's buried in this church. There was also a manor house opposite the church where the family once lived. Out onto Church Lane now and the next landmark is a pub, a 16th century inn called the White Hart. Here's the rear of it. For some reason, the traditional front has been bricked up, making you wonder if it's still open. I can assure you though, it is. We haven't moved very far in that last section, and still, we've covered so much. Time to get ourselves walking once again. So here's the importance of footpath way markers. Directly opposite the White Hart pub is a footpath which I am about to use. But if this way marker right here wasn't there, then I would struggle to find this path because it looks like the entrance to someone's house. But that's where we're going. This footpath winds its way to Bruton Road through the back of some brand new housing developments. Over the last two decades, there's been a modest amount of new builds here, but they haven't ruined Carlton's overall character. Here's the lovely Carlton Grange, once a Victorian family home, which is now used as a B&B. Next door, there's an old Baptist chapel. Built sometime before 1872, this would become a store for a local seed merchant which once supplied Hovis. It's now a house. Here's one for the avid cyclist. This is Route 646, which is what's known as a link route. It connects Carlton to Bassingham. Follow Bassingham Road for a while and you'll pass this farmyard before the road forks in two. We are heading west. We're now on Sands Lane. Commonly known as The Sands, this has been for many years an area of local amenity. And have a look what I found off Sands Lane. The allotments, not a, a big patch of allotments by any stretch of the imagination, but enough to keep the fans happy for another day. I tell you what, there's some massive pumpkins in that plot over there. I know we're heading towards Halloween, but we ain't there yet. Mind you, I suppose you've got to give them time to grow, haven't you? Okay, so let's continue down Sands Lane. At the end, we'll take a left turn, and that is the high street. We're heading towards the playing field next. At Carlton Mill is Merchants, a local bottle gas supplier. Despite the name, there's no actual mill here, but Carlton did have one. It was a windmill and it was located up Norton Disney Road. It's up there next as we make for the playing field and Brewery Lane. I couldn't help myself with this sign. Which parking only? Violators will be toads. Well, it is Halloween tonight, right? Now we're at the playing field, located up a grass track off Wheatley Lane. It's more of a playground than a playing field, though. 
That said, it does still possess a football pitch, albeit not a full-size one. Carlton has no village sports teams that use this. Back to the road and here's Bells Court, another block of modern residences off Wheatley Lane. Next, it's Brewery Lane. With a name like that, you'd have thought it would have been pretty easy to find some stuff about this area. Clearly not though. If Carlton had a brewery, which I think is likely, there are no written historical records of one. That's one for you guys to fill in. Moving on, the local community spirit seems to be good if this flyer advertising a coffee morning at the Village Hall is anything to go by. There's not much more than just a handful of houses as Brewery Lane winds its way towards the end and back towards the High Street. Now we're heading for an old school built in 1858 to replace a former school held in the vestry of St Mary's Church. This closed in 1983 and children were then transferred to Brant Bruton or to Bassingham. It's a house now. Not far away is an old Wesleyan Methodist chapel. This was built in 1863 and it closed in 1986. This too is now a house. In fact, everything left from this point onwards is a house. This once bustling village has now become a quiet commuter haven. And I think I've just about timed it right because I'm back at Moreland Close and the rain is just starting to fall again. Lovely village, Cartonley Moreland, and I've thoroughly enjoyed my walk around this place. Now, next week, next week, next Tuesday, there won't be a regular North Kistevan episode in that spot because next week is the 1000th parish episode. Do join me for that. Yes, you heard me right. Next Tuesday in the usual North Kistevan spot, it'll be a special parish, the 1000th episode. That means North Kistevan will be back in two weeks, and when it does return, I'll be in a village not too far from here, one which I know a lot of you have been waiting for. See you later. Thanks for watching this video folks don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already it really makes a difference with youtube if you're new here subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it you can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel also if you've enjoyed this episode have a look at some more videos in this series until next time i've been andy also known as the village idiot and i'm out